What is up fellow game developers? My name is Tyler Potts and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we are going to be doing a challenge that Bracky created over a year ago. It's called the 10 minute game challenge or make a game in 10 minutes challenge. Um, so before we get started I, I kind of planned out what I wanted to do uh, before actually uh, doing it. So as you can see here there is uh, squares and a circle in the middle. The circle will follow your mouse and there's a timer. So, without wasting any more time, because we don't have much of it, let's create a game in 10 minutes. Hopefully, maybe, potentially, maybe. Okay guys, so I have already opened up Unity before we start this because you know that would take up my whole 10 minutes trying to open up that. So we're going to hit start and then we are going to power through this game. Are you ready? Let's get started. All right, we've hit start, so let's go over here. Let's create some sprites. We're gonna create a square, and we're also going to create a circle. Now, the circle will be our player, so let's drop our player into the world. I'm just quickly, I know, renaming. Why am I naming things? That is not gonna give me any time bonus. Let's tag him as player, uh, and let's clear add component, and let's give him, well, yes, he needs a rigid body 2D. He needs zero on the gravity scale and continue continuous there we then need to give him a circle collider 2d and also we're going to create a player controller and then hopefully this loads quickly because as soon as it compiles we can then open up the script let's go so we now have our player controller let's move this um, let's delete that let's remove that quickly and the first thing we need is public float speed about five five um, and then we need a vector three called target position which is going to be the target mouse position we're then going to click update uh, and i'm just going to set the target position Whoa, camera i forgot what i was doing there camera dot main dot screen to what screen to world point that's it oh my god my brain is all over the place this way you don't put me under pressure i lose my absolute mind uh we need pri we need a fixed update now um and here oh why is Auto editor is really against me. Why are you against me? Uh, we want to say transform dot position. We could have done this in update. I don't know why I did it in here, but we're going to say new vector two um, equal to math f dot lerp, um, and then we'll give it the transform dot position, and then we're going to give it our target position dot x. Um, Yep, that's the first one. Oh, and then we need to give it a speed. So we're going to give it our speed times time dot delta time, fixed delta time. Uh, and then we're going to give it um, another math f. We're actually just going to copy this line here. And we're just going to check. Oh, sorry, that needs to be dot x as well. And we need to copy that from there, paste it there, and change the x's to y's. Bam. That is that movement script done i think let's hit save let's go back to unity let's hit play just to test if it works i really shouldn't be playing the game because it's going to waste my time but i need to make sure it works so here we go cool ice cream fan is here hopefully you can't hear that but let's crack on it's really loud um, we now need to create an enemy so or no we need to create a spawner so we're going to say spawner and we're going to go here and we're just going to create a spawner script. Although we don't need it right now, I need to create two more game objects. We need to go into scene view two. My computer is so slow. This isn't going to help at all. Let's create an object. Let's call this uh, spawn left and we're going to create a spawn right. Boom. Let's move this to 12. Yes, perfect. And this one to minus 12. Um, let's go into spawner. Actually, no, we need to create our enemy. So let's drop our square in and let's rename him to enemy. We need to create a tag for him because we need to be able to test collisions. I mean, I could just leave it something generic, but enemy. Let's give it a new layer too. We need an enemy letter. Enemy layer. And let's go here and give the enemy a layer, the enemy tag. Let's go up to our editor, project settings, and we need to go to our physics 2D down here. And we just need to untick the enemy from colliding with the enemy. Oh, let's drop him into. Oh, no, we need to give him an enemy. We need, well, he needs a rigid body 2D. He does not need uh, gravity. That would be false. Um, his constraints, he doesn't need to move on that or the Y, it's just the X. Um, and that should be good, potentially. Yep, yeah, 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 check, 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 check. Oh, no, we need a square. We need a box collider 2D and a uh, enemy controller. Or 
NME controller script. Let's create that. And then once that loads, we'll be able to set up our enemy movement. Uh, double click on enemy movement. We're actually gonna create a public enum so we can we can create a or di called direction, which we're just gonna have left and right so we know which way he spawned. Um, and then I'm gonna create a public direction called uh, direction. Direction, come on autocorrect, don't do me like this. We're gonna create a public float called speed as well, which we're gonna set to about 5F also. Uh, we don't need actually we will use rigid body we'll call it RB then we'll go to start method and we'll say RB is equal to get component rigid body 2d and then we're going to go into fixed update and we need to basically say if direction is equal to direction dot left we're going to say it's RB dot velocity is equal to a new vector 2 minus speed RB dot velocity Oh, this is stressful. Velocity dot y, and then we're going to copy this, and we're just going to go else without the minus. Um, could have done this a much better way, but there we go. That is done, um, and I think that's good. Let's save that controller and go back to Unity. Now we need to set up our spawner so we can constantly spawn the enemy, and we need to drag the enemy as a prefab so we can use that later on. Let's create a spawner script. What? Did I already create it? I did create it. Oh, it's already on there. Oh, no, my brain. That is wasted a good few seconds. How long do we have? We have four minutes left. Oh, we've got to be quick. Uh, spawner, let's double click to open it. Did we double click to open it? We did. Oh, God, look, I'm wasting time. I am wasting time. Um, let's go up here. Let's remove this. Uh, my brain isn't working. We need the public game object called enemy prefab. We need a public float called uh, spawn rate. Uh, 0.4f we need a public transform off left spawn point yep and then a right spawn point oh not double one one we just need one please don't do me like this spawn right we're then gonna say float time until spawn i should have gave these smaller names we'll create a private update I don't know why I didn't just auto do that. If time until spawn is less than time dot time, so the current time in the game, um, we'll go spawn enemy. Uh, spawn enemy, we'll create that in a second. And then we're just going to say time until spawn is equal to time dot time plus spawn rate. And that should be good. We now need to create the spawn enemy script void void spawn enemy and in here we need to get a spawn direction so we're going to use a random uh we'll just go say random dot range um and we'll just go past zero and two the reason we're passing two is because it's exclusive and we need to actually get uh two we're then going to create a float position y it's going to be equal to enough for random so we'll just go camera dot main dot viewport to world point uh a new vector three we're going to go zero f um random dot value and zero f again and then we're just going to get the y value from this and set that to our float we're then going to create the game enemy or the game object enemy we then need a vector to uh spawn position yeah we need to know where it spawns we set this equal to a new vector to 0 f uh, pos y so we pass through the y and now we need to say if spawn direction is equal to zero um i want to say the spawn position no spawn mm, pos dot x is equal to um left spawn point dot position dot x and then we just want to say enemy is equal to instantiate enemy prefab spawn position and then quaternion dot identity we then want to say enemy dot get component and we're just going to say enemy controller and then we're just going to get the direction and we're going to set equal to direction dot right because obviously we spawn on the left, we want to move right. And then we're going to say here, we'll literally copy this all, paste it down here, chain. Where are you going? Uh, 
We just want to change this to right spawn point um, and this to left. And then under here, all we need to do is say destroy after uh, game object after 5f, or sorry, enemy after 5 seconds, because then that will get rid of the whole spawn. Now if we go back to our game and we delete this enemy that is on top of us, actually we kind of want to recolor it. Let's go here. Actually, no, it's fine. Just play. We should have random spawning cube squares. Oh, we haven't set the variables. Oh, that's a player's worst nightmare. Uh, enemy controller. Oh no, sorry, not enemy controller. We want to pass through the enemy, the spawn point left, and the spawn point right. And we want to hit play. And now, three, two, one, play. There we go. We've got things spawning randomly coming at us from all different directions, um, which is perfect. Now, we just have to dodge those blocks. We literally just ran out of time as we done that, but we now have our game. Wow, that was so perfectly timed. So <laughs> here we are with our new game here uh, where we can dodge the blocks and move around. And that was the 10 minute challenge. Now, I wouldn't class this as a game, but apparently some people have done games smaller this than this in 10 minutes. Um, so I'm happy that I'm not the only one who's only managed to get something so basic. Um, but basically you dodge the blocks um, and that is all we've got so far. Now one thing we're missing from this I would say to make it an actual fully complete game is like a timer at the top here to tell you how long it's going to take um, or how long you've been playing so you know when to die. And also when we do die we need to actually collide and die. Okay guys so as you saw we made our game in 10 minutes and we literally hit that 10 minute mark as we... Um, finished the game which was absolutely lucky but I w again I wouldn't even call that a game I mean it's a game you move around you dodge blocks but there's a few things that are missing from the game so you when you get hit by a block you don't actually die uh, you just get hit um, so we need to add in a death we need to add a game loop so the game restarts and we need some sort of scoring system so I'm going to quickly show you what the game should have um, and how we should improve the game to make it better Okay guys, so I have um, added in a few couple of changes to the game, as you can see here, there's now a counter at the top which counts your score, um, I've added, uh, I've changed the colours of the blocks, added a background, and when you die, it restarts back from zero and blocks start spawning in at random positions again. Um, they really favour that middle position, I feel like there's something wrong with my uh, uh, timer there, um, it's always going for zero but that's fine. Um, they are still random in most cases, um, but yeah, this is what I think the game should be. Um, so I feel I wouldn't. This took me like an extra five minutes to do, so it's more of a game in fifteen minutes if you want to make this fully complete game or uh, complete. I mean, playable game with a game loop. Um, but I still think we did pretty well. We got pretty much a, the whole the core mechanics down in those first ten minutes. Okay, guys. As you saw there, we. I spent another five minutes on the game, just quickly polishing it up, adding in some uh, some colour and just literally a death loop. So when you die, you reloop the game. I think, in all honesty, so I was going at full speed. We probably could have got that done in 11 minutes. Uh, but I took my time adding the colours and stuff because I was picky with my colours. Um, but I think I could have built the whole game in 10 minutes, maybe if I wasn't so clumsy with my fingers and nervous and constantly changing things. Uh, but I think that was a great attempt at a 10-minute challenge. I, I'd say I failed because we didn't have a game loop. We needed to die and respawn at least with, um, to call it a game. Um, but I think we still did pretty well. We craved for quite... I didn't want to do a boring game um, about like falling down. I mean, Bracky did an amazing game in 10 minutes. So who knows? 10 minutes is quite a challenging time to do a game in. Maybe we'll do some more challenges. If you like this type of challenge, let me know down below and we'll do some more. Thank you for watching this video guys, if you enjoyed it don't forget to leave a thumbs up, headbutt that like button, smash the subscribe button, comment, hit the bell, um, and if you guys want to support me then you can head over to my Patreon which the link is in the, down below and now help me buy new equipment for recording and also a new gaming PC which we're currently saving up for so we can actually um, build 3D games and stuff on stream and I can do some tutorials on that for you as well. Thank you for watching this video and peace out.